Hello, welcome to another episode of What's It Like? I'm the Novice Explorer, and today we're talking about Uzbekistan. Now, you may be forgiven for not knowing of this Central Asian country or hearing of it before, but it's well worth the visit. Sandwiched below Kazakhstan, above Afghanistan and Turkmenistan, and to the left of Tajikistan is Uzbekistan. It's famous for being part of the Silk Road, for having previously prosperous cities like Samarkand, for open-aired mosques and for the Registan. It's an incredible landscape that starts at one end as deserty steppe like Kazakhstan and continues into a, a green oasis and back into a steppe-like country again. The majority of the population there are Uzbeks, but it's also made up of a split between Kazakhs, Russians and Tajiks from the neighbouring Central Asian countries. Now, of course, the national language there is Uzbek, but you can expect Russian to be very widely spoken like all of the Central Asian countries. The religion there is Islam, and obviously that leads into the Registan and the massive open-aired mosques. Touching on the landscape then, like I was saying, uh, the landscape is very similar to Kazakhstan. It's a desert steppe-like country. In the 60s, when it was a, a part of the former Soviet Union, the Aral Sea, which was one of the world's fourth largest inland seas, was drained significantly. Um, so much so that now it's less than 50% the size that it once was. Now, it was drained by the Soviets um, for irrigation, for basically for farming. And that caused this kind of shift in the, the landscape and is why that when you cycle through Uzbekistan or you travel through Uzbekistan from the border with Kazakhstan, you, you're in this steppe-like desert country and suddenly you're hit with these flashes of, of green oasis-like towns, uh, you know, like Nukus, where on the outskirts there's just channels and channels of irrigation of water to this huge farming that just pops up out of nowhere. And I think something like nearly 80% nearly of the water usage in Uzbekistan is for farming. But the majority of the country is a steppe, is barren, is, is like a desert, very similar to that of, of, of Kazakhstan. You're bound to see, you know, uh, snakes and, and camels and all kinds of things that you would expect to see in Kazakhstan and in, in similar Central Asian countries. And it doesn't disappoint, just like those other countries, you get fantastic sunrises, um, very, very hot days, and not too chilly nights in the summer. It's a very, very beautiful place to visit. And, you know, looking at the landscape and taking it in, it's, it's like something that you've never seen before. Um, and you can check out the vlogs going through this country to, to really understand what I mean there. Hospitality, again, comes into its own in a country like this. Um, it's incredible. And I can give you a few examples of the type of hospitality you can expect when traveling through a country like this. Cafes. Very, very often that you would go to a cafe or a tea house and um, not only would people be incredibly interested in what you were doing, they'd want to chat to you, they'd give you food for free. In one particular cafe, the owner's parents came down and we were dancing and, and talking about you know, where we were from. I was invited to a restaurant with a group of people and um, we had five whole chickens, six steins of beer, salad and bread all for free because it's, it's considered an honour to these people to host you know, foreigners, to show them their culture and to share what they have with you as complete strangers that they've known for a matter of seconds. Often on the roads, truck drivers would stop to give you large watermelons. Either they were carrying them as a, as a cargo themselves or they had watermelons to eat themselves, but they would stop these huge watermelons, cut them up again for free just to share watermelon with you. Absolutely lovely, lovely people. Um, you know, at night, on uh, one particular night, um, we asked if we could stay at the back of this person's uh, house. Of course, they said yes, despite um, it being illegal to host foreign nationals in your home or on your property or on your land. And that wasn't the, the only occasion. On the last night in Uzbekistan, a family invited us into their, their home to share food with us. And, and it was an amazing last night. And it really summed up the whole experience of Uzbekistan. It was fantastic. The food, um, famous for plov, which is basically meat and rice. And plov is amazing. It sounds very basic, but it's got veg and everything chopped up and thrown in there and it's got a great great flavor and you can expect to eat plov in Kazakhstan, in Uzbekistan, in Tajikistan, in Kyrgyzstan. It's a real Central Asian dish um, but as well as that you know they do these dishes with uh, you know like soup like dishes that have noodles in them. They have their own spin on a hot dog. 
breakfast was one of the best places I've had breakfast in Central Asia, to be honest. I mean, their breakfasts were just so varied with all these different kinds of things going on. It was, it was fantastic. It was like a mix between what they think Westerners would eat and their own culture thrown in one. It was, it was brilliant. And I think I had one of the best omelettes of my travels in Central Asia, in Uzbekistan. Thoroughly, thoroughly recommend going there. Um, a few kind of other crazy things then to mention. The currency there is just ridiculous. The uh, black market currency exchange rate is nearly three times the legal exchange rate, which means you end up with huge wads of cash. It's actually very difficult to find an exchange place legally in Uzbekistan, but it's very, very simple to find black market exchange rates. People literally walk up and down the street asking you if you want to change money, carrying big wads in bags and in, in their pockets, and it's a very strange concept. So many things to see in Uzbekistan. Kiva is a, an old city, very, very beautiful to go and see. The mosques, um, the registans, you know, Kiva, Nukus and Samarkand, they're all very similar in the kind of architecture and the design of these places. So visiting them is, is very, very interesting, but you see that theme, as, as you would expect, across those ancient cities. I visited one mosque um, in Kiva, I believe, that was huge open-aired mosque, and it was very different to the previous mosques that I had um, visited before, where you expect them to be more like a church Kind of type building but i did visit a very very small old mosque that was being renovated which was absolutely stunning um yeah so i mean many people travel through uzbekistan to get to another country for example go into tajikistan to start the pamirs and it's definitely worth a visit if you are heading that way the uzbek people are incredibly friendly incredibly generous like most of the people in the central asian countries definitely definitely give it a visit Thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Uh, if you did, hit the like button below. Leave me a comment to tell me what you think of the episode or what you'd like to see in next week's episode or ask me some questions about Uzbekistan. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of the future episodes coming up. And I will see you next time. Thanks very much.